Okay, so we've got an interesting uh, machine in this video here. This is uh, an 800XLF, uh, which is uh, an 800XL, which uses the Freddy chip, which provides a clock divider, etc., which used to be provided by a lot of discrete uh, 74LS ICs on the board. So this is uh, a later revision 800XL that was sent up here. Uh, with ultimate one megabyte and the owner also wanted uh, VBXE installed so we fixed up the problems with the ultimate board and installed a VBXE and this is where the problems began as you probably know those of you familiar with uh, VBXE VBXE replaces the system uh, clock or provides the system clock uh, by replacing the onboard crystal uh, this being a PAL machine, it's got two crystals. Obviously, this is for the PAL color burst circuit. NTSC machine just has the one, which is Y1 down here. So what we do, uh, the installation uh, for VBXE is basically the same here as for an XE, because the XEs all have Freddy. Um, so we just remove a transistor and a pull-down resistor at the bottom of the board here. Let me give you a closer look. Yeah, so down at the front of the board here, we've got... Q7 and R17 which are removed and the clock signal from the uh, crystal on the uh, VBXE which already has is already uh, sanitized to be fed straight into the uh, Freddy chip on pin 2 uh, is wired up to there and off we go now in the case of this machine uh, it's a bit of a problem because it doesn't actually work. Now, I'm not talking about the VBXE RGB video signal, obviously. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to just get the machine to work uh, using the legacy video output um, before we move on to wiring up the RGB. Sensible thing to do when you do modifications like this, socketing things. Always check that the machine runs uh, with the original chips in place before you actually install the upgrades themselves. So let's have a look at what this machine actually does. Right, so the, the TV is getting a picture, it's getting a signal, because the no signal um, notification has disappeared, but where is the picture? So here we go, we eventually <laughs> got some sort of a picture but uh, I don't think that's not that's not going to be a, a great deal of use, is it, when we're using the machine? So something is seriously wrong. Now, you may say, well, there's a fault on the board. Freddy's gone bad. But the thing is, with this machine, I did establish that it does work perfectly well if I disconnect uh, VBXE and put the original parts back on the board. So we haven't got a bad Freddy. VBXE is fine because I've tested it with a spare board, so I know it's not VBXE and it's a bit of a quandary. All right, so if we have a look at Lotharic's installation guide here, there we go, so Atari 800XLF with Freddy chips. So here's the installation instructions for this machine for VBXE. So if we look at the bottom here, we have got uh, J6 pin uh, four, which is ground signal, wire that up to ground and we've got pin 3 which is the 14 megahertz clock signal from VBXE and as you can see we wire this pin on the left leg of the pull down which has been removed and that feeds the clock signal into Freddy pin 2. Now Freddy pin 2 also has a connection uh, for an optional oscillator package you know those little tin can things which has got the uh, it just it doesn't need the transistors circuit etc you sometimes see those uh, on xe machines so there is space on the board for the oscillator package but that's not here so the connection that goes to the oscillator package is completely open circuit totally isolated so there's nothing else on this signal path i did ask Lotharic if he had any ideas and he was extremely helpful Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And he offered me some 
very good advice and the advice was to solder the VBXE 14 megahertz uh, clock signal to pin to a Freddy which uh, is exactly what it says in the instructions here so that was extremely sometimes you just need a bit of a sense check just a second pair of eyes on the situation so uh, Lotharic uh, confirmed that I had actually read the instructions correctly and that I had wired the signal to the correct place now if we have a look at what we're actually getting on this machine just so they don't make any assumptions so we turn it on again now we'll go into um, frequency mode here and I want to see what we're actually producing just to prove I'll just get the, the meter in shot here so you can see it okay so on Pin 3 of J6 we get 14.18 megahertz and on pin 2 of Freddy we get 14.18 megahertz and on pin 5 of Freddy we get 1.73 megahertz which is correct. So if we have a look at the uh, schematic for this board pin 5 of Freddy is the O2 signal which is 1.4 megahertz since I actually turned the machine on the O2 signal on pin 5 of Freddy which is being output has dropped from 1.79 megahertz or 1.77 to 1.41 megahertz so we still get 14.18 megahertz so the Freddy is getting the correct frequency uh, from the VBXE, but everything else is completely and utterly screwed up. Very strange. So I got in touch with Jürgen uh, van der Rick, uh, known as TFHH, <coughs> and he suggested immediately that we could have a problem with the power supply of the Freddy chip owing to a design flaw on this particular revision of the 800XL board. I'll link, I'll link to this thread at the bottom of the video so you can have a look at it. So what he's suggesting here is that there is a, there is a bypass um, capacitor or decoupling cap uh, next to Freddy here, which is connected to ground. So if we look at the board here, if we lift this up a little bit here is our decoupling cap next to the Freddy chip so that's connected to ground and that should be between 5 volts and ground on the Freddy chip so if we have a look at the schematic we've got uh, power on VCC is on pin 40 of the Freddy chip and VSS is on pin 20 so this cap should be directly positioned between uh, power and ground. So power is on pin 40. So this top pin, I mean, we do have continuity here, but it's not direct. What Jürgen is telling us here that Freddy has its own 5 volt supply, which comes from this coil at the top here on L3 so there's a separate 5 volt path which goes to the Freddy chip now this decoupling cap is not between ground and the Freddy 5 volt line it's been between ground and a different 5 volt line uh, which he has decided uh, causes an issue so we need a decoupling cap that goes directly between pins 40 and 20 on the Freddy chip all right, so let's grab ourselves a uh, 100 nanofarad cap and we'll solder it across here. So we're going to solder between there and pin 40, which is the 5 volt supply for the Freddy chip. And we will see what happens. 100% sure it's going to work, so I'm not going to even bother to trim it down yet. I'm just going to try it for the moment let's do a really nasty job okay not pretty we'll have to hang the front of the board off the desk so that we don't make it short let's try it again 
and as you can see uh, the system works reasonably well well the picture's dropping out a little bit and which is kind of interesting so I don't think we're perfectly there yet but I think we are getting there and I think this is the uh, confirms the reason for the issue so I think we're a little bit skewy with the timing of course it's possible that we've got the wrong crystal jumper on the VBXE board I'm just going to ensure that that's not the case some of these VBXE boards have the crystals in the wrong order so I've switched the jumper to the NTSC position and now we get a steady picture on the screen so it would appear, I'll turn this off because uh, obviously I need to do a proper job of soldering this uh, capacitor in place but once again Jürgen wins the day here with uh, something I would never ever ever have thought of uh, looking for Um, of course, I did Google um, Atari 800XLF VBXE, but uh, I didn't happen to find that topic. And thank you very, very much to Jürgen for replying within the space of about five minutes after I emailed him. So there you go, 100 nanofarad capacitor between ground and 5 volts on the Freddy chip because Atari screwed up the routing of the decoupling cap on the board next to the Freddy chip. And... Obviously because of some sort of uh, different tolerances when we install VBXE or as Jürgen found out when he was trying to design other upgrades that would work in this machine and it simply prevented them from working, sent the clock crazy. Presumably Freddy doesn't get a steady clean power supply and it starts to act in strange ways and outputs all the wrong frequencies uh, on the various uh, clock divided outputs. So yeah, there's an object lesson in troubleshooting. So uh, there's one uh, for Latharek to stick in his uh, bookmark folder. Uh, the next time somebody asks about this problem, perhaps he will be able to suggest this as a fix. Uh, I'm absolutely over the moon with this and thank you again. I can never thank Jürgen enough because he's uh, very, very patient with my questions. I've learned an awful lot from him. And he is a real, real expert on these computers, no doubt about it whatsoever. So, uh, yes, another one for the VBXE knowledge base. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.